good morning everyone welcome to this video in this video i am going to walk you through how do we create a new project in metillion so once you are done with setup of metillion now it's a time to get started with metillion as we all know metillion is an etl or elt tool so we sometimes call it eltl tool as well because we use it for the mix kind of uh, use cases extract transform load as well as extract load transform so to get started with Metillion, we need to create a project. The hierarchy is like, you know, you need to create a project group which, and inside the project group, you can create multiple projects. So I'm in this login console of Metillion and when you go to projects on the left hand side top corner, click on switch project and you find an op option of creating a project. Click on create project. And, and this is the first uh, thing that we need to define that is project group. So there has been some of the project group created earlier, but I would like to start it a fresh demo. Okay, demo is the project group name and uh, we would be creating a project name Matillion demo. It's a project name. And we'll put some description here saying this is for demo purpose and uh, we can create the project as a private project or public project when we check this option of private project this project will not be visible to any other user of material and if we want to include the sample project we can include that as well so I will include the sample project so that I can I can walk you through some of the sample uh, jobs that get created in Metillion, right? Let's click on next. Next we have environment name. So the environment name is basically, uh, so for any Metillion job, we need AWS connection and Snowflake connection. Why let's understand this quickly and there will be a detailed video on this of uh, explaining why do we need AWS and Snowflake connection later. So AWS, uh, as we all know that Metillion sits on top of AWS EC2 instance and Metillion is just a kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, integration tool, you would say, where Metillion will leverage the compute and storage capacity of AWS as well as Snowflake. So Metillion is an application which is hosted on AWS EC2 instance and it leverages its local SSD for all of its metadata and application related storage. But all your data goes to S3 because S3 is the service which Metillion leverages for staging all the data. So if you are pulling data out from any of the external sources like for example RDS or Teradata, right? So Metillion will fetch the data from these data sources and it will stage the data on S3 temporarily. Temporarily means it's, it's staging the data intermediately so that once it puts the data inside this snowflake, it will clean up your stage. So it, it's mandatory for this Metillion to use AWS S3 service for storage intermediate storage if you are not at all interested in using aws s3 metillion does have an option of using snowflake internal stage where it will be ingesting data raw data in in flat files in snowflake internal stage and then from there it will push into the metillion it will push, push into the snowflake right now metillion is using aws s3 for storage, it's not just the service which Metillion would be using. There are other services of AWS as well, which Metillion leverages, or you can use those services as a part of the Metillion job, right? So obviously now Metillion as an application will need some privilege to connect, connect to uh, uh, AWS resources or services, right? So how do we, how do we allow Metillion application as an authorized uh, a client or authorized principal who can access AWS resources by defining some uh, you know set of privileges or some set of credentials that will allow them the privilege right so 
uh, we can configure multiple environments each environment can have different different credentials right so we may maintain dev environment prod environment and in prod environment we have separate bucket in dev environment we have separate bucket and obviously we don't want the dev to access prod prod to access dev so keeping those isolated right we create separate credentials with separate level of privileges so that they are logically isolated so in Metillion, we, we need to, to define one default environment and other than one environment you can create multiple environments as well with different different credentials so let me put up one environment name here saying uh, dev right this is a dev environment and uh, i can configure the dev environment credential so that whenever we are executing any job in this environment it will access only the dev resources so dev is the name of the environment you can keep it development as well and uh, in this aws credentials we have two types of credentials one is instance credential and other is the a credential that you can define as the user credential right so here i can go ahead and click on manage and i will click on plus icon so if you see this aws tab is selected i can select gcp azure as well so aws plus icon and i'm defining a name here let's say matt hyphen demo it is asking for access key id access key id is one of the component of aws user which used for identity and authentication so any aws user can authenticate with aws account using username and password as well as access key id and secret key access key id and secret key is used for programmatic access wherever any application would be accessing aws resources on the behalf of user right so here we are not the direct direct user uh, who would be accessing the aws resources it's the application matillion application who, which would be accessing aws resources so we cannot use username password here we have to use the access key id and secret key right so this is something we have already uh, set up in the previous video right we we generated aws user credential that was supposed to be used with this aws i mean a metalian setup so i have that handy i will just bring it in this is my access key id i will get it copied and paste it here Similarly, I will get my secret key as well here. Uh, just a second, there was some typo error. Let me bring it here. And now it is asking for encryption type. By default, it is picking KMS, which is generally the recommended option, but it's not mandatory. We have not encrypted our credential in KMS service of AWS. Therefore, we'll go ahead with encode it and then click on test so it's saying that here s3 api check credential sqs api check credential looks like the credential is not valid i mean this credential is not valid for accessing the aws resource so to validate this we will check whether we are using the correct access key id or secret key or not so I'm pausing this video just to verify whether we are using the access key ID and secret key correctly. Okay, so let's uh, check what's what's wrong with this because in, in our last video, we have already set up our AWS resources and that's where we created the username, password uh, and, and, and the access keys, right? How to troubleshoot this? So we will log into AWS console and there we'll check the user username matt user if you go to the username and uh, go to the security credentials you would see the access keys right you can generate more than one access keys like maximum two access keys for one user so if you see here it's ending with 5w the access key id of this user and here 5w is so, so this looks like access keys we are using correctly access secret key you cannot you cannot view you cannot regenerate 
So now let's check the permission, right? If you go to the permissions of this user, the user does not have the permission other than just changing the password. But in our previous video, we created the policy. We created a custom policy for this user to use and connect AWS resources. So let's see if we have this user as part of any group. So this user is a part of Metillion POC group. And when we go to this group, we will check if the group has the permission or not. Because if a user does not inherit the permission directly from the policy, it can inherit it from the group. So now I'm in the group and here when I go to the permissions, I see that there is no permission or policy attached to this group. Hence the user is not able to inherit it. So let's go to add permissions, attach policies and attach this Metillion POC policy to our group. And now once it is done, let's come back to Metillion and click on test. So you would see that uh, S3 API success, SQS API success, SNS API. So it is asking us to check the credential. Okay. So we have given only this uh, SQS, S3, then SNS is also success now, CloudWatch. Okay, we'll have to actually check it again. So sometimes it is going for success, sometimes it is saying check for credential. Maybe just because we have changed, updated the policy, that's why. Otherwise, it should not create an issue. So, no. so yeah, so for S3, SQS, SNS, we are good. Let's click on OK and click on OK. And from here, please make sure that you are selecting the AWS credentials which you just now define. Sometimes what happens is that we click on manage, we add the credential, but we forget to select it from drop down. So here in the drop down, we have mad demo. Let's select mad demo and click on next. So when you click on next, now it is asking for account, account, username, password. So this is where we define the connection to Snowflake. As we all know, Metalion is an EATL, ELT kind of tool and all of its job query or the workload will be executed on Snowflake, the target warehouse, right? So it's, it's mandatory to define a warehouse connection to Metalion job, Metalion project. Otherwise, it will not be able to execute any job, right? So now to this account, right? If you go to the worksheet here, we have the account URL. This is our account URL, right? This is our account URL, but we don't have to copy paste this URL. We just need to get the account of from this URL. So if you just remove HTTPS colon double slash and then dot snowflake computing and rest of this, what you get is your account name dot your AWS, I mean your cloud reason dot cloud service provider. So your account name dot reason dot cloud service provider is actually your account that we talk about. So this is what your account is and this is the value that you need to bring in here. Okay, so please make sure that you are trimming all the you know un 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 unwanted prefix or suffix. In the username, we have already created a user for Metalion. We'll get this username here and the password so we can save the password as an object here so uh, right now what will happen is that when we put the password here the password will be saved with the name of username so every time when you are creating a new connection or you know you are uh, refreshing the connection you don't have to ha you don't have to basically type the password here you just need to select the password from the drop down and that could be selected with this name okay but for the first time we'll have to type in the password and for the type typing in the password, I will just bring the password from here. And uh, that's it. Let's click on next. And once once your first level of you know uh, connection is uh, success, then you should be able to see something in this drop down. In this drop down list, if you are not able to see anything, it means your 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 username password is not valid. If your username and password is valid, then your account URL is not correct. So let's see if we are able to get something in the drop down. 
we are able to see all the list of rules that the user can see but these are the rules that the user can see user will not be able to assume any role user will be able to assume the role based on the permission that the user have so i will select uh, the dev math developer and then i'm able to select only one warehouse based on which role i'm selecting and then based on this role i have a data database which is dev math training db and then the default schema dev schema right i can click on test and here it is success this confirms that the snowflake connection is successful we can click on finish and here is our project now in this project this is the default version all right we can create many snapshots of the version but i will talk about this in detail the versioning part later any change that we do to our project will be applicable to this default version by default okay but so hierarchy is that you have project group on top then you have the projects then within the project you have snapshots oh sorry versions so right now it is default version but you can have multiple versions in the one project and within the version you can create folders so here i would say my first job uh, instead of job i will say etl job okay click on this so you will see that there is a folder created my first etl job and within this folder you can create many sub folders as well or you can create orchestration job or transformation job so there are only two types of jobs available in metillion orchestration job and transformation job orchestration job will help you to pull the data from external sources or it will help you to uh, you know uh, uh, use different utilities that is there within metillion and transformation job will will have only the component related to your snowflake the target warehouse so anything that you can do within the snowflake using sql and objects same thing you could be able to do in using the transformation job right so i will come up with another video with a sample uh, end to end job creation using orchestration and transformation job so till then uh, uh, i leave it for uh, exploring this right so once you are done with creating creation of your first uh, project and the first job just explore some of the sample jobs that you see dim airport setup and dim airports and see uh, like you no know, some of the components and i will i will have a sample end to end job in the next video so thank you so much for uh, watching this and uh, i would see you in the next video